Welcome to Bet On It, powered by Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart, and I'm kind of sad, you guys. Was just joking with uh, Marco and Joe before we came on live, and man, there's only like three college football editions of Bet On It left, and I still have yet to hit a money line parlay. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get into it. Marco D'Angelo at Marco in Vegas, Joe Ranieri at Joe Ranieri. Big game breakdown time, and for some reason, Marco elected to go with. Two Pac-12 teams, Saturday, ESPN, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, Utah at Oregon. Oregon, a three-point favorite in this one. Total, 61 and a half. Marco D'Angelo, please tell our audience why you are making them suffer through two Pac-12 games here. Mm. Kelly, these are two big games this week. you got all four teams are in the top 15 in the country, so... Uh, it's going to seal the fate for possibly uh, one of these teams to sneak into the uh, big dance, uh, get to the playoffs. But we know that the Pac-12 has been on the outside looking in for, you know, how many years. Uh, USC, obviously the best candidate. But let's talk about the first one, and it's Utah and Oregon. And Kelly, coming into the year, I was all about the Utah Utes. I thought they were going to repeat as the Pac-12 champion. I love their style of play. Uh, this is a team that's very physical, something that most of the teams in the Pac-12, uh, I don't want to call them soft, so I use the uh, politically correct term and say they're more of a finesse team instead of soft, but that's what they are. But this Oregon team, last week, a shocking upset loss, and I got to figure they were looking ahead to this double revenge match with Utah. Remember, last year, Utah beat them in the regular season and came back. I think it was just in a matter of uh, three weeks. Uh, they played twice. They played for the Pac-12 championship, and Utah laid it on them again. And it was because of that physicality. But if you look at this team this year, Utah, although they still like to pound the football at you, and for the most part have been good defensively, when they have faced the high-powered teams in the Pac-12, they've had some problems. Um, they did lose uh, to UCLA. They gave up 42 points to them. They gave up 42 points to USC. And they rolled the dice when they had the tying score at the end of the game. They could have just kicked the extra point and went to overtime. Instead, they went for two and got it. And although that was a gutsy move uh, to get the win, what it told me is Coach Winningham doesn't have confidence in this defense in the pressure situation against the high-powered offenses. And Oregon has one of those. Oregon can run the football. They can throw the football. And I think they get their revenge on Saturday. Oregon probably – or excuse me, Utah will probably be one of those popular dogs, and I just hope they are because we know if everybody lines up on the dog, what happens – I'll go ahead and take Oregon and lay the points. Joe, I'm with Marco. I lean towards Oregon and the points here. Also, I have to kind of wonder what we're going to see from both defenses. Oregon, just an atrocious defense. And that's what scares me here, actually, about laying those small three points here at home. What say you? So it's interesting, Kyle, because when you compare Pac-12 teams right now, Passing defense in the Pac-12, number one, Utah. Number 12, Oregon. So you've got a Utah team defensively who's done a great job against the pass. You've got an Oregon defense this year, not exactly great against the pass. However, uh, Utah number three against the run, Oregon number two against the run. So that defense for Oregon, although they've got some holes in it, usually it's in the secondary. Uh, they've been very stout against the run. We saw this game last year. Uh, the last one we saw, it was 23-0 at the half. And we still don't know how healthy Bo Nix is. Uh, Coach Lanning uh, is saying absolutely nothing. But what we know is not one, but two. Offensive lineman, Alex Forsyth, his center, Ryan Walk, his guard. Uh, all three of those guys, including Bo Nix, were banged up late in that game. No word on uh, whether they're going to go. Are we looking at backups? So there is some question marks. Certainly Bo Nix having a hard time walking from what we understand. So I think when you put it all together, the fact that we've got 
two defenses that do uh, either the run or, or defend against the pass pretty well. I think this is not going to be a high-flying shootout type of game. I think this is going to be a grind-out kind of game, uh, one in which I think is going to land under the 62.5 points, especially if Bo Nix is 60%, 70%. They might uh, spend some time running a lot more than passing in this game. So I'm going the under in this one at 62 and a half. Very odd that the Pac-12 would do this, but Saturday, Fox, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Mm. Both games on at the same freaking time. USC minus two and a half at UCLA. Total 75. Joe, I'm going to kick it right back to you. All right, so uh, we just talked about how we uh, we might have a little more defense in this uh, Oregon game versus Utah. You are not going to find any defense with USC and UCLA. Let's be realistic uh, here. I don't know that they can put uh, a game, uh, a number that's going to be high enough. 76 right now, 76 and a half. I mean, who cares? Do we really think either of these two teams are somehow going to all of a sudden lay the hammer down defensively? No. We saw this last year, and what did UCLA uh, run up? What, 60-some-odd uh, points in that game last year? Uh, I do think this is going to be a good old-fashioned shootout. I do think that points are coming. You know, quietly, UCLA has become, uh, you know, one of these teams, much like Purdue is when they're a favorite at home, Cal. What do you do? You bet against them. Uh, because they can't cover anything. Uh, that's kind of what Chip Kelly and UCLA have done. The good news is they're a dog in this one at home, a spot I would like them so much more in, and uh, I do think they are absolutely live to win this game outright, but ultimately there is going to be so much. This is going to be such a fun game to watch. Uh, points, points, more points. This lands somewhere in the upper 80s, low 90s. Uh, I'm going to take the over in this one. Marco, if only we could just tease college football. Mm. UCLA over a touchdown here. Uh, all jokes aside, I do agree with Joe. I lean towards the dog here, uh, but I do have my concerns in regards to this total, but there is no way I'm touching this under. Oh, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. Whenever you look, and we talked about the Utah-USC game earlier in the year, they still got into the 80s with Utah as one of the <laughs> participants. So now, and they can play defense and generally don't go up and down the field. What's these two going to do? Uh, UCLA, they, they stubbed their toe last week. The only thing I can say, minus 20 against Arizona, they just felt that they were going to show up and win that game, looking ahead to this one against USC. Uh, this is a big game. As far as USC goes, of all of the four teams, like I said, USC is the team that has the resume that could get them into the playoffs. They're literally a two-point conversion away from being undefeated. Utah going for two, as we talked about earlier this year. But what we've seen with this USC team uh, down the stretch here is they were rolling early. They were rolling both uh, point spread and winning, uh, putting up big numbers. But now as we got to the second half of the season, Point spreads keep getting bigger. The defense starts to get a little worn out. And that's hard to say. Why Why is the defense getting worn out? Well, because the offense just scores too damn fast. That's the problem. Uh, you get the USC defense right back out on the field, and they're still defending for a lot of plays. You know what? I seem like I saw this in the second half at another school, uh, Oklahoma. This would Ooh. happen where they would put up big numbers and Second half of the season, all of a sudden they had some tight games. That defense is wore out. Oh, oh, what's the common denominator? Lincoln Riley. And that's where I'm going here. I'm, I can't disagree with Joe at all. There's no way that I have an under in this game. But I like the home dog here. And the only thing that's really keeping me from snapping the rubber bands off is the fact that they did drill them last year at USC. Uh, they put up 66 on them in that game. And, you know, I know revenge is one of those words that's uh, overused the most, but uh, it's one of those spots. Actually, it was 62 points. It wasn't quite as bad. 62 to 33 was the score last year. But this is a spot that the coaching staff wasn't there. Yeah, the players remember it, but the coaching staff wasn't there. Yeah, they'll look at the film and they'll use it as a motivation. But 
if you got a chance to knock off your arch rival, the team that could end up in the playoffs in a national championship, I got to go with the home dog in UCLA. It'll be a fun one. I got it. Uh, UCLA, 44, 41. Give me the Bruins. Prime time, home dog. Mm. And it is stupid to have to these two Pac-12 games <laughs> when the first weekend that you have the Pac-12 that is relevant for two games to put them side by side. Just absolutely. Listen, Marco, it's almost as stupid as you making me talk about both of them back to back in the big game breakdown. <laughs> We're going to pivot now. Let's it talk about Cal. <laughs> Can we do the Cal game next? <laughs> It's a Pac-12 oh, I'm show. I'm sure Marco's probably got them as a barking dog. <laughs> Time for uh, some TNA with Mr. Ralph Michaels. <laughs> There's the birthday boy. Happy birthday to Ralph. Everybody jump in the comments and wish Mr. Trends and Angles himself a very happy birthday. Ralph, number one at Wager Talk right now. And uh, what do you got up for this weekend? I know you got a birthday special going on. You know what? It's the great time. Uh, birthday 33 is the promo. You'll get 33% off any all access package seven days or higher. So a seven day package will only be $66, a 30 day package 199, a 90 day package only 499. Or if you wanna use it for 12 months, that means you're getting a year for under $4 a day. Number one in profit the last 30 days. And my NFL run Kelly, 20 wins and five losses. That is 80%. Oh yeah, by the way, the last time I've had an NFL regular season side play, December 2020. It's been 23 months and that 5% NFL play will be loaded by Thursday night. Birthday 33 is the code. Love to see those far and few between 5% because that means it's time to tail. Ralph, and this is the college football edition of Bet On It, though. So that is what I'm looking for here. All the trends and angles for week 12 in college football. What have you dug up for us? Well, I've got four systems and then a nerve chart uh, as you request each and every week. First three are mine. Fourth one is from my son. We'll get to that. What happens when a team doesn't score very much? Well, I'm going back since 2012. If you scored 10 points or less in your last game, and you scored 10 points or fewer in your second game, so back-to-back -back games with 10 points or less, the total is under 62 and a half, so it's not one of those crazy totals, and your line is either your favorite or your dog to 17 at home. So back-to-back -back 10 points or less, total under 62, and you're a favorite up to 17 or a home dog, it says to fade those teams. They've only covered 36.4%. Those two low scoring teams at home this week, New Mexico and Army. So fade New Mexico and fade Army. Number two, you lost to this opponent last time. You're also off a loss. You're in the final regular season month of November. You're at home the lines between the threes. So, you have revenge, you're off a loss, it's November, you're at home, lines between the threes. This line may have jumped a half point either way, but to me the system still applies. A very strong system, 73.7% .7 on Charlotte this week. So this one says to play on Charlotte. System number three, you were previously an away dog and you won. And the line was plus 17 or more, and now you're a home dog. So you pulled a huge upset as a home dog. And those teams off those upset wins like Vanderbilt and Arizona have only covered 18.2% of the time. So this system says to fade Vanderbilt and fade Arizona. And the last one from my son, Jeff Michaels, at JM Sports CLE on Twitter. You can find him over at Sports Memo. Going back since 2007, you lost the last, you lost the last time to this opponent as a favorite. You lost two times ago as a favorite, and now you're on the road as a dog 
who are favored up to two touchdowns. So you're double revenge, you're on the road, and you're a dog or a favorite up to 14 points. Those teams, like Arkansas State, have gone 63.1%. So this fourth and final system from my son says to play Arkansas State. System one, fade New Mexico, fade Army. System two, play on Charlotte. System three, fade Vanderbilt, fade Arizona. System four, to play on Arkansas State. I love those, Ralph. Uh, might have talked me off laying it with Army there. That is for sure. Now to get to the good stuff. Tell me about the nerd chart. Well, you know, college football, you have one goal. And some people have national championship goals. Some people have better goals. But for the majority of football in the middle, you've got to get to six wins. So what happens when you're a five and five football team? I will post this on Twitter at CalSportsLV so you can dive into it more. But the chart is simply broken. The top half in the green means you won your last game to get to five and five. The bottom chart in the red says you were five and four, you lost your last game, and now you're five and five. So take a look on the top. Those teams that previously won their last game to get to five and five, when they're on the road the next game, They've only been 40.5% and 45.9%. Those teams that lost their last game have been very good as home dogs, profitable as home favorites, profitable as away favorites. But if you lost your last game and now you're five and five and now you're an away dog, it's been a negative. So both away dogs are a negative. That's something to look at. If you're a five and five team and you're now an away dog, it's been a negative situation. Thank you to the birthday boy at Cal Sports LV on Twitter. Make sure you guys go over there and wish him a happy one. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, it's time for some barking dogs. Whether you know him as the pin or stat daddy, everyone at Wager Talk family would like to wish Ralph Michaels a happy birthday, and we want to include you in on the celebration. Ralph Michaels celebrates his birthday on Saturday, November 19th, and until the clock strikes midnight, you can save 33% off any Ralph Michaels All Access All Sports package priced at $99 or higher using coupon code BIRTHDAY33. In the last 365 days, Ralph is number one in NBA winning percentage and NBA profit, number two in NHL winning percentage, at a current 80% NFL run going 20 and five, and a college football run of 23 and 15, and it's an excellent time for a long-term package. With code BIRTHDAY33, you would pay only $66 for a seven-day all-sports, all-access pass, $199 for a 30-day, $499 for a 90-day, or under $26 per week for a 365-day pass. Happy birthday, Ralph, and take advantage of code BIRTHDAY33. Welcome back to Bet On It's Now. Time for some barking dogs and Marco to give us his analysis on Cal. <laughs> Yeah, Kelly. And you wonder why I sent out that tweet the other night whenever Adam Trigger was in town. You know, you're just mean. All right, let's go to uh, Western Kentucky. And Kelly, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous here. Uh, I'm seeing some more people on Western Kentucky. I hope this doesn't turn out to be that public dog this week. But I love the situation. I, what the situation is, is we've got a good team in Western Kentucky. Uh, out of a small conference, playing an SEC team. How excited is the SEC team, Auburn, going to be here? They're sitting at four and six. Uh, their whole season is going to be made if they can pull off an upset somehow next week against their arch rival. Do you think they're really excited about playing Western Kentucky out of conference game this late in the season? Oh, yeah, I guess you could say, oh, but they need to win become bowl eligible they have to win this week and next week well good luck with that i'm gonna go ahead and take western kentucky plus the points here uh i like this team uh offensively they can score points uh not thrilled with auburn we've seen them this year uh, many times struggle to score points 13 last week against texas a&m in a snooze fest that they won 13 to 10. No, I am not laying points with Auburn. Go ahead and give me this one. We saw an early move on this game. The line did open up at seven. 
Uh, Sharps come in immediately and took Western Kentucky, confirming what I already liked in this game. I've got them winning this one outright. 31-28, grab the points, and as we always say, put a little sprinkle on the money line. Yeah, Marco, I'm considering sprinkling as well in my three-team money line parlay with this team, but I hope you're right. I hope this one doesn't turn out to be a square pup. Joe, you better not have a square dog for me this week. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, you know I don't have the square dog. Listen, I gave you a Navy last week getting 17 and a half. That worked out I'll pretty well. <laughs> so I am going to uh, – listen, uh, I've tried to avoid doing this all year long. But there comes a time you got to pick your spots in life. And uh, backing my alma mater, Oklahoma State, uh, this wait, is wait, that wait, point wait, wait, in life. Uh, I ju- texted you about this game I, this morning. Right. Are you stealing? Are you stealing my play? I'm not stealing your play. I just happened to get a little phone call before the show confirming a few things that made me just. I'm going this way. So no, if no you happen problem. to agree no with problem, me, we're Joe. good. We're good. I'm just saying. I see how it is. You always want to point the fingers at other people, and I send you a nice text asking about this team, and see? now here we are on the show. Listen, Guess I have to change my best bet. Thanks, all I Joe. have to say is Marco State's going with West Virginia. So Mar- Marco's going West Virginia here. Let him bother him with that against K-State. No, I'm only kidding. Um, all right, so here is the deal. Uh, Spencer Sanders is a go one way or the other. He is playing in this game. He's going to be starting. Uh, not going to be 100%. I think that's a given at this particular point. This is Bedlam. Uh, it's one of the last Bedlams, too, I believe, that, uh, that we're going to have. Um, there is uh, some concern of what happens if Spencer Sanders can't play the whole game. And it's listen, the shoulder's been a problem. He wasn't even supposed to play against Iowa State. We all saw it. He comes in there late, replaces Gunner. Uh, And what does he do? Well, he leads that team back, and they end up uh, getting the victory uh, at home. So some guys, you can't put a number and quantify what they mean to a team and what he means to this Oklahoma State team in Bedlam. I believe the quote that I was hearing had something to do with, um, I would have to be six feet under for me not to play in this game. He is going. He is tough as nails. We know it. There has nothing been more profitable over the years than uh, Coach Gundy as a dog in a spot just like this. So I've tried to avoid sucking up to them and uh, being the homer, but I think this screams uh, Oklahoma State uh, getting the cover like Gundy has done so many times in the past. There is a chance Sanders don't make it through this game. Uh, Regardless, uh, as long as he's appearing and he is starting and giving them everything he has, I think that'll be enough motivation to be able to put it together. Not only cover this game, not only cover, but win this bedlam in Norman outright and send him off with uh, with a big parade back in Stillwater. I'm with you, Joe. I have uh, Oklahoma State in my three-team parlay. That one is already locked and loaded with the touchdown here. I'm going to kick it right back to you. And normally we talk about being too high in the NFL. This is a fade of you. Yes. Um, Listen, I am there. I'm going to get this right at some point. I think this is right. I have lost uh, more money. Fading TCU uh, this year to the point where it's I want to throw up. Um, so, you know, what what happens now, right? Like, fool me once, uh, your fault. Fool me twice, my fault. Well, fool me five times, uh, my fault. I'm an idiot. Uh, but you know what? I just can't. I can't wrap my head around Dave Aranda, this Baylor squad, and Kel, you saw him in person, laid the biggest egg in the world against your K-State team. Uh, it I believe was d- since uh, 2006 was six, the worst. Yeah. <laughs> six, that's yeah, something exactly like that. It. it was great. I, I enjoyed every single second of it. I froze my ass off, and I made everybody but the two Baylor fans suck it up with me because it was just such an enjoyable experience. It wasn't as good as 2012 12, yes. revenge, but yep. it, was, it, it was like one of those moments where I'm like, you know what? You guys deserve this. I want all the pain. I'm watching everybody walk up the stairs to their car. We get to our car. I look at our good friend, C.T. Betts. I go, 
you know you guys are going to beat TCU next week, oh. so just get over it. Like, oh. we've got a two-hour car ride back to Dallas, but just get over it. <laughs> so exactly I'm glad to see it. that we agree again. <laughs> they are, I mean, listen, it hasn't been great. Baylor, one and six straight up, two and five against the number against TCU the last seven times. But this is a revenge spot as well, right? They went into TCU last year, Cal. They were upset um and they have been waiting i know when you talk to ct you talk to guys around this bailey they had this game circled i'd almost hate to say it was a look ahead spot a little bit here uh past k state i really thought they thought they might be able to uh get by k state it didn't work out that way i think uh coach aranda is going to have their attention uh how many more times are we going to ask TCU to go on the road here in this kind of spot and be like, all right, need you guys uh, to come through and win this game again? I just don't see it happen. They're going to get bit, and I think this is the time that they get bit. I think uh, Baylor ends up uh, getting it done, even though the public loves themselves from TCU, and they are all over TCU, right? The undefeated Darlings, number four in the country. The playoff committee's got them lit. Yay! I think this will be the last time we have to hear about them in the playoff, though. Baylor gets it done against TCU in this one in a spot that they have wanted to have them for a while now. I think Baylor gets it done. Sorry to our friend CT Betts, but I hope you are wrong. I won a 21 20 final. <laughs> Baylor plus three gets the cover. TCU gets to go on and be undefeated. We'll see your asses in the Big 12 championship game. Marco D'Angelo. <laughs> I got to know, do we have a trap or a sandwich this week? Oh, uh, Kelly, we got a sandwich. But, you know, in typical woman fashion, you want it all. You, you, you want to cover. You want them to win the game. Uh, but you cover and, you know, just set it up for you. The world revol revolves around Kelly. Marco, it's we're both only children. We know how this works, okay? <laughs> it's my way or the highway, and I get my revenge in the Big 12 championship game against a team who should never even have been in the f conversation. The <laughs> end. Tell me how you really feel, <laughs> Kelly. Uh, let me just say I agree with you, and I agree with Joe, but I refuse to give out Baylor on this show because I didn't want to get all the TCU hate that I get every week in the YouTube comments. How many weeks are you going to go against TCU? Well, I can tell you I will have money on Baylor uh, this week, and uh, I agree with all of you. And that was the whole reason why I was so high on Kansas State last week was that particular situation. Mm. Baylor was in a bad look-ahead spot, in my opinion. Now I found another look ahead spot that I like. Ooh. And we're going to take a look at NC State and Louisville. And NC State, there's no question, uh, disappointment. But it's been because of injuries uh, that hit this team. Last week, they lost as an 18-point favorite to Boston College. Uh, what happened in that game after three straight games with no turnovers, they turned it over four times in the game. And that ended up doing them in. Now, you can point out, but Marco, they got their arch rival, North Carolina, on deck. Yeah, they do. But when you lose at home in your uh, senior day as an 18-point favorite, you're not looking ahead to next week. You want to get that bad taste out of your mouth right now. Uh, so I'm looking for them to show up on Saturday when they head to Louisville. Now, for Louisville, different story. This is a team that's already bowl eligible. Both teams are are bowl eligible but you've got a spot where they are coming off of playing clemson now they gave it a go but it wasn't enough they lost 31 to 16 to clemson but that was a big game is this a big game for them well it is their home uh finale but you know are you going to get that excited about nc state when you've got your rival in state rival kentucky on deck I'm going to go with the better defense, getting points, and just hold on to the football, throw it to the right color jerseys, and we'll be okay. I like NC State in this spot. They're ranked 13th, allowing just 18.1 points per game. Uh, NC State is also ranked number 42nd at 5.2 yards per play. I'll take them in this one, plus the points, calling for the outright upset. It won't be pretty. But NC State, 24 to 20. 
Mm. Marco, I know that there is a little machine on my computer called Google, but I wanted to ask you for the viewers on the show, do we have a Malik Cunningham update? Mm. Uh, I don't have that for you. Uh, still listed as questionable, so let's see what happens. Yeah. Thank you, Marco and Joe. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, it's time for Best Bets. How many handicapping groups can say they're around before Twitter, MySpace, AOL, Sunday morning cable infomercials, beepers, and 1-800 numbers? Founded in 1957, the Gold Sheet is the country's longest-running sports betting newsletter and has served bettors for over six decades. So between 1957 and now, if you have not checked out the Gold Sheet, here's your chance for only $1 per day. Head to goldsheet.com and just go to buy now or click the special box on the main page to get both the NBA Gold Sheet and College Basketball Gold Sheet newsletter for only $7. For just $1 per day, you will receive projected scores, spread and totals, power ratings and strength of schedule, Team straight up against the spread and over under records in their season average line for both sides and total. Plus, tons more handicapper information to help you bet with confidence and, of course, tons of picks. This offer is for a limited time only, so act fast and head to goldsheet.com and try it out for seven days for only $7. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back to Bet On It. It is now time for Best Bets. And usually I give out an outright underdog, or at least one I think has a shot to win outright. I'm not sure this one can get it done, but this is way too many points. I'm going to take the Fighting Illini plus 18 over Michigan. Yes, it's in the big house. Yes, that's a very tough place to play. We all know that. But this is an Illinois team in a kind of a buy low spot, if you will. Just a few short weeks ago, everybody was ready to give them the Big Ten West. And what happened? Yeah, that's right. Last week, I played against this team with Purdue, and Illinois was handed another loss. Now, they still have their hopes alive for that Big Ten championship berth. It's not over just yet, but I need to see some resilience from this defense, and I believe we will here. Michigan, what do they have going on? Oh, that's right. They're undefeated. Who do they have on deck? Uh-oh, Ohio State. Maybe uh, this team lives in the moment. Maybe they don't. Uh, we know that there's been some issues uh, from J.J. McCarthy, and I think we see some more of those issues when facing the Illini this weekend. Give me the double digits with this Illinois team. And uh, yeah, don't be surprised to see them keep it a lot closer than that. Marco D'Angelo, it is week 12 in college football. Who is your best bet? All right, Kelly, I'm going to go one that I don't think will be a popular play. I think the other side is going to get some love because they've won four out of five games and they're sitting at five and five. What's that mean? They need one more win to become bowl eligible, and everybody's going to be talking, but it's a must-win situation. Well, when you're in a must-win situation, you must not have taken care of business at the beginning of the season. That's why you're sitting here in that must-win at the end of the season. And before we say, what, they're playing better football now, yeah, let's look at who Utah State has beaten down the stretch to go 4-1. and one. They have played... Four teams, those four wins, only one team had a winning record during that stretch. They beat Air Force. Now, I want to point out, yeah, Air Force is, you know, one of the better teams in the Mountain West, but they caught Air Force the week after they played one of their fellow military schools. They were coming off the Navy game, so they caught them at the right time. But let's look at who else they beat. They beat New Mexico. They beat Hawaii. They beat Colorado State. You know what those teams' records are? Two and eight, two and eight, and two and nine. Ooh. Come on, people. I'm not buying it. I'm taking uh, San Jose State at what I think is an absolute gift of a number. People are overreacting to this winning streak of Utah State, factoring in the must win angle. You've got a team here, Utah State, uh, offensively is number 105 in college football as they are scoring just 22 points per game and they're 116 in yards per play at just 4.8. I'm not doing it. I'm going with San Jose State. They have scored 27 or more points in six of their last seven games. Yeah, they're coming off a loss last week against San Diego State in a semi-rivalry game there. Uh, with San Diego State. They get the job done here. I'll take them minus the two. I've got them winning 31 to 20. No, Marco. 
Sometimes I get a lot of slack for being mean to you. Well, guess what? I just got a slack from our producer. Oh, I need no. to correct something. Those games are at 8 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. They're not exactly on at the same time. So thank you for setting me up for failure right out of the gate on the show. Mm, and they wonder I, why. I'll that's why full blame. I, I looked at it and I still... All my uh, things are in West Coast time, but my mind is in East Coast time. And sometimes I slap the three hours on a game. Ooh. I've been here in Vegas since 2008, Kelly, and I still refer to the NFL games as the one o'clock games and the four o'clock games. Yeah, no matter where I am, it's always going to be 9 a.m. Uh, college football <laughs> kick because it, it just feels like 9 a.m., of course. Uh, all jokes aside, love Marco, but I always appreciate him. You know what he does, guys? He writes the script for the show each and every week because he knows how busy I am. And all he's doing is watching horse racing all day. Joe Ranieri, uh, who is your best bet for this week in college football? I love how he likes to slap the time out of the Pac-12. That's nice, Marco. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, so we've got an interesting one uh, coming up. It's actually not interesting. I think it's, uh, it's, it's fairly easy here. I'm going to look at a total, uh, and I'm going to look at North Carolina taking on uh, Georgia Tech. So here's what we've got. we got North Carolina, a one-loss team uh, with a date set for Clemson. They also, as far as I'm concerned, uh, disrespected. They're about four spots different with the committee list this week, yet they have the same record at Clemson. They're going to have to play Clemson for the ACC championship. And quite honestly, I don't know why Clemson would be four spots better than this North Carolina team. Uh, I think the offense of North Carolina is way better than anything we're going to get at Clemson. And now they've got to take on a Georgia Tech team who ranks in the ACC. I believe there are 14 teams in the ACC. Georgia Tech has the 13th ranked defense here. You know who's got the 14th ranked defense in the ACC? That would be North Carolina. So I am anticipating points, points, and more points. And don't forget, North Carolina has got uh, some style points in the back of their head here. So any sort of blowout situation they can get, uh, setting the showdown up with Clemson and a possible, hey, they got a puncher's chance here in the playoff if they win out. I don't think they take their foot off the gas here. I think Georgia Tech Although it's a backup quarterback, I do think they'll have some success moving on that North Carolina defense. The number, 62-63, somewhere in that ballpark there. I think to go up and over, North Carolina is going to have no problem dropping, uh, you know, 40 or more on this, uh, on this Georgia Tech defense. I don't need a whole lot from Georgia Tech to get up and over here. So uh, I'll be looking at that total to go over when it's all said and done. Okay, it's time for that last commercial break. Then we come back. It's that recap for all of you cheaters. Nope. Just scroll to the end. <laughs> Have you checked out all the new handicappers at Wager Talk? If not, here's your chance. You can take 50% off your first daily or three day all access purchase at Wager Talk using coupon code TRYWT. Our new roster of experts is 30 deep, covering sports from all around the world, giving you tons of options to choose from. All you have to do to redeem this offer is go to wagertalk.com, choose a handicapper of your choice, and use coupon code TRYWT at checkout, saving 50% on your first purchase. Welcome back. Thank you guys for hanging out this entire show. And if you didn't and you just cheated it, can you give us a like or hit the subscribe button? Stop being such a freeloader. Uh, Utah at Oregon. Marco and I in agreement here on Oregon minus three. Joe and I agreement here on the under 63. USC, UCLA, Joe said this one's going to be fireworks. Marco and I agree on the dog. Working dogs, Oklahoma State plus seven and a half, which I also love. Marco, Western Kentucky plus five and a half, which I also, also love. Uh, we'll get to those best bets here in a minute, but we got to go fade Joe Public. I took the three with Baylor. Joe thinks they went out right. I just hope they win by one. Marco says the sandwich spot here is perfect to take the Wolf Pack plus four. Best bets, I'm going to take the line eye and too many points at the big house. San Jose State, Marco coming out of left field with that one. Mm. And Joe said, take the over 63 in North Carolina. Every single week for our loyal guys that come and hang out with us and give us all the love, we appreciate you. For those of you that do not, let's start making this more of a habit, okay? We've only got three bet on it 
for college football left. And I want to make the most of it. Jump in that comment section. Give us some love. Give us some hate. We don't care. Just help out our algorithm. From Marco, Joe, Ralph, and myself, until next Wednesday, let's bet on it.